Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm not even, I'm gonna stop apologizing because every time I apologize, I always make excuses like a man. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> let's continue. <laughs> No, I'm so sorry for being shady, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I hope. Um, my previous video, which was a superfluous haul, I did post it during a time where Black Lives Matter was strive. Not that Black Lives Matter has died out; it will always be Black Lives Matter. It's just that um, there was a it was a it was a very pivotal time for that movement in 2020 this year. And I do believe that, okay, it might have been like one or two individuals who had a problem with me posting my superbalist haul during that period of time and actually even marketing it during that time. I would like to apologize to other people who possibly had, had taken offense and I did not know anything about it. And people who had taken offense about me being so selfish in, um, posting that video. I'd like to make a few points that um, I bought those items during level 5 of the lockdown in South Africa and um, I literally had no intentions of ever um, offending people or coming across as very aloof and insensitive towards the Black Lives Matter. So I would like to apologize to anyone who's offended and I hope to do better and just know that I would never ever do something like that intentionally and you guys know like I am very genuine and open with everything so yeah um but anyway so let's get right to it you guys know what the drill is follow me like comment and subscribe and today's topic is we're talking about online learning and um imposter syndrome so let's get to it I really thought that would be really great to have a conversation like this so first of all I want to explain to my viewers is that like I, I don't know if you guys, most of you, some of you do follow me on social media and you guys know that I've been fighting with the kind of content that I want to post on YouTube. And I've been fighting with whether I want to post content that the masses are posting. And not that there's anything wrong with that, but I've always wanted to do my, like start my YouTube on the basis that I want to talk about topics that are very close to my heart. So topics like such as commenting on maybe a business, something in business, something in politics, something to do with colorism. I, I've always been an advocate against colorism and I've always been an advocate for black is beautiful and dark skin is beautiful and everyone's skin is beautiful so i just want to like bring more topics like that back to my channel yes i do i felt like at some point i felt very discouraged because i felt like people weren't engaging enough with that kind of content but you know what i was like stop it <laughs> it's my channel and i just really feel like the people who first joined me here know exactly what to expect from me and i just want to keep making you guys proud so i really thought this is such a great topic because everyone's been lamenting about it all over social media and obviously through messages through group chats that like online learning has been such a roller coaster and it really really has like um and the reason why i said i want to talk about online learning as well as imposter syndrome is because i myself deal with imposter syndrome on a daily basis i'm ocd i'm a perfectionist it's gotten better over the years of course like I've always considered myself, even as a kid, as a high functioning individual. I always wanted to be the best. And being the best, it never brought me any sort of satisfaction. I was never satisfied. I could get 80 and I was like, why couldn't I get 88? I could get 88, why couldn't I get 90? Like, it was that kind of, um, that was my process when growing up. So why I bring online learning is because I really do think it genuinely ties in very, very well. So as, as you know, in South Africa, obviously there's lockdown and most universities, public universities in South Africa have moved towards um, online learning um, as opposed to um, obviously on campus, cam campus based learning. So um, that means that uh, it's been so, so hectic, guys. Um, having to do, I'm, I'm, I'm finishing off my my BCom law degree, so I'm I'm doing third year law, I'm third year level modules, and don't forget I do BCom law, so I do accounting as well as financial management, and 
having to do modules like that where you go to you have for instance i know with my law of things um, my law of things which is tied in with law of property and stuff um going into class four times a week getting registered going to class discussions going for tutorials like that was a whole week of work and you literally had to be on the wall so now having to like get emails from lecturers and be like what do i do now because i'm at home i don't have the support that i thought i had when i was attending your classes you know so it's like that's that's hectic you know now i'm thinking am i gonna pass this module because i don't think i'll know what i'm gonna do because he's my lecturer has always reiterated it's important you pass this module it's a very difficult module it, it's a lot of work it's a lot of content and it's a very important one and it really genuinely is so um my whole chat was that how am i gonna do this at home i have siblings at home um people make noise there's the garden outside mowing the lawn um my mom is so excited to have me so anything important so funny happens she runs to my room so me i have to tell you because i'm like mom I'm in, I'm in class um but obviously as time goes by we all learn to respect each other's spaces we all learn to kind of deal with this online new lifestyle that we all had to adopt where it be work where it be university primary high school whatever it is we all had to adapt and you know as humans we, we are very good at adapting but it, it, we only adapt when it's under conditions that we all are accepting we we it's under conditions that we accept but this was just sprung on us people came in coronavirus got into the country and now started spreading so we all had to retreat and act swiftly. So we were all put in the situation with no warning whatsoever. So yeah, so online learning has been so difficult. And um, why I bring in the imposter syndrome, it's literally making my thing, like it's making me tingle because um, as I'm getting my marks and as I'm doing wild, I'm like, these are not my real marks. That's how I feel. I feel like these are not my real marks. And I just feel like, already at school even if i was on campus anytime i do well i'll be like oh i was just really lucky or i was i was so lucky to attend that lecture because if i did not attend that lecture i wouldn't have gotten the mark that i did that literally my vocabulary and the way i speak about my academics on the day on a daily like i believe that everything i do is a fluke and i'm not the only one i probably feel like there are students watching this right now and they're probably like oh, ma'am you are literally saying exactly what I'm thinking. So um, obviously imposter syndrome, I've been mentioning it. So obviously I'm going to put the definition down below because I don't want to, uh, don't want to mess up any proper definitions, but I'm going to give you context as to what I'm speaking. Basically an imposter is someone who's not who they say they are. Basically it's someone who's fake. It's, uh, it's, you could say it's a facade of sorts, not representing who you are. So, um, Having that syndrome is basically thinking that any success is not attested to you, but to other factors around you. So um, I was, I was, I was watch, I went and read this article on Forbes, and basically there are five um, ways to spot an imposter, a person with imposter syndrome, not an imposter. Please don't get that confused. But basically, the first point was that you can spot an, a person with imposter syndrome through number one being the perfectionist. The perfectionist guys like i you like the perfectionist has to get everything right they have to they have to be the be all and end all they have to be on top of the game all the time no mistakes are allowed and if mistakes are made then it sets that person off like until until and that's how i feel like that's that is a manifestation of ocd and all these and anxiety of course and then the second point was that the superwoman or man so basically this kind of person with imposter syndrome um believes that they have to be the best they have to be they have to supersede everyone around them they have to be the savior and if they're not then they're not successful they have to and it brings so much stress upon that person because you can't you can't be you can't be the best you can't be a superwoman you or man sorry um you can't be you can't be perfect and you never will be and you have to accept that and when you're not you think that i'm not supposed to be successful like that's not who i'm supposed to be that's not where i'm supposed to be then you have the natural genius oh my word this is like yeah the natural genius feels like 
if they should be smart, no matter what. Any topic that comes across the table, they have to know it. They literally cannot be unaware of what's happening. And it's like, you know, as a human being, you're not gonna know everything. And it's okay to not know everything. You, It's okay for you to kind of be like, oh my word, what is that? You know, but the natural genius feels like, um, they are supposed to be born like that. They're supposed to be the genius. They're supposed to always be the person everyone knows that they, they, they have the information. They have all the knowledge in the world. So they have to kind of be that person. But guys, sometimes it's okay. Um, we're all not gonna know everything, you know? Um, we have the soloist. This person believes that they don't like to ask. For, <laughs> they don't like to ask for help. Um, they believe that they can sort every single problem in their life without anyone else. And asking for, the help, for help is a sign of weakness. And obviously, being weak is not an option. And number five, the last one is the expert. It almost ties in with the natural genius, but basically the expert has to be the expert in everything. There's nothing they can't do. There's nothing that nobody can tell them about. There's nothing someone else can be like, I know how to do it better than you. They have to be the best. And funny enough, like, I don't know if um, people who deal with this um, kind of can relate to every single um, five characteristics that to spot an imposter, a person with imposter syndrome. Um, I want to say with suffering from imposter syndrome or other. Um, you can kind of relate to every single thing. And I, and I say I relate because um, as a young person, I've always felt like I, I'm intelligent to a point where um, even if I'm not going to fake it till I make it. And if I know people want to speak about something, a teacher would tell me, tomorrow we're talking about Mercury and its characteristics. What do I do at home? I go with the air. Research, research, research. Even though I know she's going to teach me tomorrow, but when she, the minute I walk into class, she's like, okay, Mercury, I have to be the first person who puts up my hand because I want to be that person. I want to be the expert. I want to be that knowledgeable person in class because it brings me... I don't want to say satisfaction because you don't find satisfaction in, in in whatever you're doing, but rather it calms you down. It brings down your anxiety that you had. It's very, very, very bizarre. Like it's so bizarre. And I, I, I read like there are four quotes that people um, usually say when they're suffering from this. It's like, I must not fail. I feel fake it's all down to luck success is no big deal like genuinely and why again i said bring it down to online learning i'm getting my marks i mean brilliant they, they like my mom was like omg and she's shouting on the board she's like tamia you have done spectac uh, spectacularly well and um <laughs> and i'm like yeah thank you because i don't i don't feel like i deserve the marks that i got because i'm like these books around me, I have coffee around me, I go to the toilet whenever I want. The environment is not the same environment that I'd have if I was on campus. So it just really, really makes me feel like I don't deserve the marks that I'm getting. They fake. It's not really me. And um, I, like I always have excuses as to why my success is not on me, but in fact is around me. And uh, yeah, guys, I really feel like it's such a tiring way to live. And yeah, but now I think you just need to realize whenever you feel like you have these kind of thoughts and affirm yourself and be like, no, it's you. Like you are the reason why you at that point you act. You're the reason why you have the marks that you have because you're the one who wrote the test. You're the one who put in the work. Hopefully you put in the work. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I want to go on to, I asked people on my Instagram to send me questions regarding imposter syndrome and um, online learning and people were really gracious enough to send me. So I'm going to go into the next segment and talk about those questions and wrap it up. <laughs> First, um, actually it was a DM rather. Um, it was from, I will put the ads here. Um, with everything that is happening, I feel like it's very discouraging to have motivation to work hard and be excited about working and having a life outside of us because it, it'll feel the same as the change of environment is um, similar indoors. Also, it's easy to not trust yourself or lack, lack of studying as many rely on Google or open new books so I could babble on, but yeah, it's a lot of controversy around online learning indirectly and also being stagnant. 
I agree with this wholeheartedly. Uh, it, it really ties into what I mentioned before. You just feel like it's not the same environment. You don't trust yourself. You're always questioning every answer that you put down because you're like, if I fail this, it would be so ridiculous because I'm at home, you know? Um, I'm not in a lecture, cold lecture hall that has aircon blasting from all sides of the, the, the hall, you know? So I really agree with this wholeheartedly. It also feels like you're not going anywhere. It, it makes me feel like, am I gonna, after I, I, I get my degree and I move on to the next year and stuff, am I, am, I, am I gonna move on? Am I gonna still be at home and not do anything? Am I even gonna get a job? But am I gonna do more articles? Like there's so many am I questions, you know? Okay, um, this one is great. This was a, a, a sticker. So I, this is a quote. Always have the confidence of a mediocre white man. I think this speaks volumes on the socio-political dynamics of imposter syndrome and it normally plays out really well in lecture halls. Sorry, it's me of you. <laughs> She's so cute. Um, but basically, um, yeah, basically, we do see this in lecture halls. I personally don't like answering questions in lecture halls and everyone knows that I like to be alone in all of the smarty pants. But sometimes I get so overwhelmed because I feel like everyone around me knows more than I than I do. I feel like everyone around me is going to be, a, in, in my instance, is going to be a, a better attorney than I am. And I feel like I am not, I'm a mediocre person. I have a mediocre attorney and I shouldn't open my mouth or put my hand up because oh, my lecture, my lecturer is going to laugh at me or everyone in the class is going to be like, what the hell, why is she even here? Like, those thoughts go through my head, guys, and I just sit there. And, I, and then what do I do? I'm on my phone. Because I'm like, what's the point? You know? Or I'll study later, alone. Not with these people around, because clearly they know more than I do. So that means I need to study more. It means that I need to work 10 times harder to feel adequate in class. It's, that's hey. Anyway, um, I struggle with imposter syndrome. Like, I'm in varsity and having a midlife crisis. I agree with this. Um, you just don't know what's what. You are in varsity, but are you really in varsity? Does it feel like you? I, I feel for the babies, the first years. How do they feel? Like they literally had literally two months, two to three months of varsity before the time's up. Like, how how do you feel? Like already, I, at least I've had the taste of varsity. I've had the I had the taste of the life of being in varsity. But those babies, they're home, and they have to do varsity work on their own. And how do they feel? How do they feel about not ever touching other certain parts of the varsity? Like, and yeah, like this whole um, likening it to a midlife crisis, genuinely that's feel like what a midlife crisis would feel. Hence, you do weird stuff, you start doing, maybe that's why I was a whole spirit of people like baking and cooking and doing lives and stuff because people were like, snakes, <laughs> what do I do now, you know? Um, in terms of, this is the next question, in terms of imposter syndrome, I realize that the part of the reason most, if not all black women experience it is because we're raised to be humble. Oh, hey. We are raised to be humble about our greatness. We are conditioned to not stuff our greatness in people's faces. We taught that in order to deserve, I mean, deserve pure happiness, we need to struggle first. We need to endure heartache before experiencing pure joy. Um, pure joy. Um, Lamar, the imposter syndrome black bodies experience stems from the PTSD we've inherited from the oppression our ancestors went through. Um, so that's, oh, that's the end of it. And you're spitting. <laughs> you're literally spitting because personally as a black woman, um, I do feel that um, a lot of other black women feel the same way. Um, you know, you see it with the uncles. You see it with the uncles, right? I... <laughs> Okay, let me not do that. But I, you, um, I was just gonna generalize and say you sit with your uncles and you tell them this is what I know and you know more than what they do. Then they tell you you're being disrespectful. Who's gonna marry you? Like who's gonna marry you when you're so disrespectful? You talk out of turn. And I'm like, but you, um, you guys should be happy. I'm going to school. I'm educated. I'm knowledgeable. But you guys don't care about that, right? As long as the fact that I have, I'm a woman. I can never ever amount to anything other than a mother, a cook, and in some instances a slave, basically. And yes, basically some some males will reduce a woman's 
success in terms of a degree, diploma, um, matric certificates, you, what are you going to do with that certificate? It's not going to make you a good mother. It's not going to make you this. So what do you feel? Yes, I have a degree in natural sciences, but it doesn't matter because anyway, you know, I got it because I'm black. I got it because of the quota system. I got it because I'm a woman. I, I'm in because they need more women in natural sciences, you know? Or when you get there, you feel like, I'm not good enough, so I'm gonna be in the background. And even when you know that you deserve to move up in the ranks, I won't fight for it and I won't speak out of turn because what if I get fired and then they're gonna say, I told you so. Why are you speaking in the first place? Why, why are you thinking that you're better? Yo, yo, at that point, we're not allowed to feel, we're not allowed to be arrogant. <laughs> we are not allowed to be arrogant and like I, don't, I, I feel like people don't talk about this enough but arrogance doesn't necessarily mean you think you're putting your nose up and thinking that you're better but sometimes it's that you know what you know and nobody can tell you what you, that you don't know what you know because you're knowledgeable you're an expert and if you're an engineer and you're like no we're not going to do that now they're like oh you're arrogant she thinks she's better and just because you gain some sort of success and money and you now start to hold yourself in a certain way. Yo, those are the words you literally hear. No, guys. Yo, yeah, no. And this one, I'm enjoying online learning. I can attend in the comfort of my own home with a nice cup of coffee. And yeah, that's, that's some people. <laughs> and that, that, let's not break down online learning. It is quite a comfort. But I think for the majority of the responses, um, they kind of really, really put. They really hit the nail okay i really don't know that idiom i keep getting it messed up <laughs> okay but they, they were spot on they were spot on with their responses so yeah so anyway guys i know i asked you guys i know you guys won't do it but like if you guys have anything you guys would like to add please do comment um down below um let's open up the discussion um do contact me on my social media i love it when you do these kind of things like i really really love it because i learned a few things maybe that i didn't know anything about and maybe someone else learns a few things or maybe someone might dispute something that i'm saying or someone might be like whoa like yeah no i feel that same way so i guess this is the end um i hope you guys enjoyed this maybe we can do another part if if, if more questions and comments do come through maybe we can expand on this but I'm just giving you guys a taste of certain things I think I'd like to post more on my YouTube. Let me know if you guys dig it, if you guys don't. If you have suggestions or you feel like I could tweak this, this here and there. Or maybe there's a certain topic you'd like for me to touch on. Please do let me know. I am very open. Like, very, very open. <laughs> and you guys, like, I do see a lot of comments on social media about how SA YouTubers keep doing the same thing. They have no, um, they're not, uh, like... There's no variety and there's no creativity and there's not enough content to watch because everything is boring, 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 boring. So I'm telling you, if you guys think that I could do better and you guys think my content is boring, let me know. Give me suggestions. If you feel like there's something else that you feel like I could be doing that you would like to watch, let me know and I'll give it a try. Genuinely, like let's open up this discussion. Let's give constructive criticism as well as um, um, also being very helpful in growing the South African YouTube space. So that's it from me, Samia Juliet Matakane. Oh wait, I sounded so presenter-like. <laughs> okay, that's from me, from Samia Juliet Matakane, and yeah, I'll see you.